good afternoon everyone so i guess we stopped at mesosphere audible hai we stopped at mesosphere वो डायग्राम समझ में आया या उसमें डाउट है वॉट इज दिस दिस इज अ ग्राफ ऑफ हाइट एंड टेम्परेचर सो जीरो किलोमीटर्स उसके बाद ट्वेंटी किलोमीटर्स उसके बाद फोर्टी किलोमीटर्स सिक्सटी किलोमीटर्स एटी किलोमीटर्स 90, 100. उसके बाद डॉट्स क्योंकि 400 तक क्योंकि यू कैन नॉट शो 400 किलोमीटर सीयर 80 के बाद 100, 100 के बाद 120 इसलिए वी मेक डॉट्स एंड देन इट इज 400 प्लस सो इफ वी कंसीडर द लोअर 16 किलोमीटर्स और ये ग्राफ में 0 डिग्री सेल्सियस माइनस ट्वेंटी डिग्री सेल्सियस माइनस सिक्सटी डिग्री सेल्सियस माइनस फोर्टी माइनस सिक्सटी माइनस एटी माइनस हंड्रेड एक्सेट्रा सो टेम्परेचर इन डिग्री सेल्सियस एंड हाइट और अल्टीट्यूड इन किलोमीटर्स फाइन विद दिस एंड व्हाट हैपेंस इन दिस इज इन द ट्रोपोस्फियर लोअर ट्रोपोस्फियर एज वी गो अप द troposphere the lower most layer as we go up the temperature goes on decreasing or wo ban jata hai around somewhere around minus 60 degree celsius at the end of a troposphere jisko hum kehte hai tropo pause what is the importance of troposphere all the atmospheric phenomena occur in the troposphere mount everest troposphere mein hai ya stratosphere mein bhi jata hai troposphere mein height is somewhere around 8.5 kilometers while well, the height of the troposphere is somewhere around 16 kilometers over the equator, equator. and poles pe 8 se 6 kilometer 8 se 10 ya 8 se 6 because ye vary hota rahega as per the seasons all the entire life is present only in the troposphere winds are present only in the troposphere chahe wo surface winds ho chahe wo jet streams that is the sub अपर एयर सर्कुलेशन द क्लाउड आर ऑल्सो प्रेजेंट ओनली इन द ट्रोपोस्फियर वेदर इट इज दर आर सम ऑफ द क्लाउड्स विच आर नोन एज सीरियस क्लाउड्स विच मे बी प्रेजेंट हियर बट मोस्ट ऑफ द क्लाउड्स वेदर फिनोमिना एक्सेट्रा इज प्रेजेंट ओनली इन द ट्रोपोस्फियर एंड मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंटली इवन द क्यूमोलिम्बस क्लाउड इज प्रेजेंट ओनली इन द ट्रोपोस्फियर एंड देयर फॉर क्लाउड है तो रेनफॉल विल बी ओनली इन द ट्रोपोस्फियर ना एज वी गो अप this in this area the mixing of the wind stops and therefore temperature ka decrease bhi stop hota hai so this region is known as tropo pause which is ideal for flying planes tropo pause ya stratosphere dono the depending hai aapki plane ki capacity aur kitna dur jana hai if you go, want to go from mumbai to delhi so aise ja ke aise nahi aa sakte so you will flow only in the lower atmosphere but mumbai to new york You go up and come down. If you are a pilot of Sukhoi, यहाँ पे fly करोगे तो लोग बहरे हो जाएंगे नीचे. It will make so much sound. So they flow in the stratosphere. Mesosphere में, if you are a pilot of Rafale, इसलिए हम इतने ज़्यादा पैसे दे रहे हैं तो mesosphere no flights can go. Okay? इसलिए हमें mesosphere के बारे में आइडिया भी नहीं है. Mesosphere is the best thing for us as a student. बिकॉज उसने सिर्फ इतना याद रखना है टेम्परेचर गोज ऑन डिक्रीजिंग विद द इंक्रीजिंग हाइट इट इज द कोल्डेस्ट लेयर एंड वाई वी डू नॉट नो बिकॉज इट इज आउट ऑफ द लिमिट ऑफ द फ्लाइट्स फ्लाइट्स कैन नॉट गो बियॉन्ड ट्रोपोपॉज या लोअर स्ट्रेटोस्फियर 
and it is below the limit of rockets. Rockets cannot come below the ionosphere. So that is one layer where we do not have much information. We just know that meteors burn in that layer. If you want to study mesosphere, there is one option. Sit in a balloon, let that balloon go up and then study the mesosphere. So that is why we do not have any basic idea. But then next layer comes, that is the stratosphere. In the stratosphere, why this is what is happening? The temperature is increasing. Minus 62, it is going to increase up to 80 degrees Celsius. Now, why is this happening? Because the stratosphere has the presence of ozone, what we will call that as good ozone, because it will block the ultraviolet radiations from entering the earth. And because of this, it will protect the lower earth from skin cancer, yeah, from global warming. Now, the problem is we are depleting this good ozone because of gases which are known as CFC and H HCFC. So, I am asking you one question here. So what is the answer here? CFC? Yes. BFC? Methyl bromide? HFC? No. HFC is not. So answer here is 1, 2 and 4. Now exam mein kaise methyl bromide hai ki nahi? You do not know. But you know that jis mein bromine hai that is harmful. So what is bromine? Bromide means it is a compound of bromine. And thus you will have to come to the conclusion. Therefore, the answer is methyl bromide also. Instead of this CFC, if I give now, does it have chlorine? Yes, chloroform, it has chlorine and thus it is harmful for the ozone layer. So have the understanding of the concept, jisme bromine is there, jisme fluorine, the chlorine is there, it is harmful for the ozone layer. And therefore, to protect the ozone layer, we have Vienna Convention. Montreal Protocol and then we have Kigali Agreement. Same question. Which of the following gases are now covered under the Montreal Protocol? Options are same. What is the answer? Did Vienna Convention ban any of the gases? No. Did Montreal Protocol ban? Yes. All the brominated and the chlorinated gases because they were harming the ozone layer. Then came 2016 May Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol or Kigali Agreement. But what is its name? Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol. And by that Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol, even fluorine, fluorinated gases, HFC was added to the list of the banned gases. So now tell me the answer. All of above. 
नाउ लुक एट द पास्ट ईयर क्वेश्चन दो बार आ चुका हैव यू रिटर्न दिस अंडरस्टूड एवरी वन वाई दिस वाई बिकॉज बाई किगाली एग्रीमेंट इवन फ्लोरिन इज एडेड टू द लिस्ट फाइन नाउ द सेम क्वेश्चन हैज कम ट्वाइस इन यू पी एस सी वंस इन टू थाउजेंड एट एंड वंस इन रिसेंट ईयर्स now if you go now this is the question which has come once in 2008 so now if you go by 2008 ka answer the answer will be a and c only but if the same question is repeated now in 2018 19 what will be the answer answer will be all of the above why because in 2016 even hfc was added to the list so based on this i am making asking you third question So I have not taught, but you have read this in the news. correct statements which are correct answer one is correct paris agreement deals tries to reduce the global warming by 2 degree celsius and it will try to limit that by 1.5 but pehla target kya hai 2 degree celsius now read the second statement montreal protocol only deals with the protection of ozone layer right or wrong why it is wrong because the word is only it does not deal with the protection of ozone layer with the addition of hfc now montreal protocol also deals with global warming i have told you in the last lecture that hfc is not harmful to the ozone layer it is a super greenhouse gas and therefore to reduce the temperature global warming we have added hfc into the montreal protocol is say montreal protocol ka dimensions the area of the montreal protocol has increased it was earlier dealing with only ozone depletion now it deals also with the global warming so the second statement is wrong so the answer here is one only this is how applied questions come topics are same the only thing is you have to understand the topics and this is how the questions come in the preliminary examination you have to apply the knowledge what you have this is you know but still all you said ki ye right hai you know we have written the answer but most of you said ki answer is both true silly mistakes understanding this limit the global warming below 2 degree celsius above the pre industrial level below 2 degree celsius above the pre industrial level i have just given a generalized statement obviously the statement will come in the examination a technical statement reduce the limit the global warming below, above the industrial level by less than 2 degree celsius this is how the statement will come i gave a very fast generalized statement my focus was on the word only and see this is how upsc will play with you up what is the answer answer is both samajh mein aaya 
दिस इज हाउ ईच एंड एवरी वर्ड मैटर्स इन द प्रिलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन अब तो ये स्टेटमेंट राइट है इट डील्स विथ प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ ओजोन लेयर एंड ऑल्सो ग्लोबल वार्मिंग पहले था वर्ड ओनली दैट इज वाई द स्टेटमेंट वॉज रॉन्ग so in this this is the region of stratosphere where there is a dominance of ozone gas and we will call the lower stratosphere as ozonosphere after that there is stratopause and again after this the temperature will go on increasing decreasing and it will become minus 80 degree celsius in the mesosphere it is cooler than the temperature at the tropopause and this is because density kam hai if the density is lesser we do not feel the temperature Uh, at 90 kilometers from the height from the ground this is the lower limit this is the uppermost limit of lower atmosphere this is the boundary of lower atmosphere and the upper atmosphere what do we call this layer as we call this as an karman layer why it is important because meteors after entering the karman layer they go in flames they burn so that is all about the mesosphere so you can just remember with the help of diagram here ki meteors will burst or they will burn in this layer and after that we go into the outer atmosphere jahan pe the temperature goes on increasing and it becomes very very high and it may reach 2000 3000 degree celsius but itna high temperature does not affect rockets does not affect the astronauts because the temp air is so rare here matlab the density is so less मॉलिक्यूल्स टच ही नहीं करते एयर के भी एंड सिंस द मॉलिक्यूल्स डू नॉट टच देर इज नो ट्रांसफर ऑफ हीट सो सेंसिबल हीट इज डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द इंसुलेशन एक्सेट्रा बट द टेम्परेचर इज वेरी हाई द ओनली थिंग इज इट कैन नॉट बी मेजर्ड बाय द नॉर्मल थर्मोमीटर नाउ दिस लेयर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज दैट इज फ्रॉम नाइंटी और हंड्रेड टू फोर हंड्रेड किलोमीटर्स this layer has the presence of charged particles which we will call ions and it is known as ionosphere it is divided into further layers d layer e layer f layer g layer jo gs mein zarurat nahi hai it is known as an ionosphere ionosphere are the charged particles and inka importance are two one importance is when you send radio signals from the earth it goes to the ionosphere and the ions will help them reflect back to the earth so what is this technology dth direct to home satellite communication it is only because of the presence of ions in the ionosphere that the radio signals are reflected back into the earth and as a result of this communication is possible why because there are presence of ions second is as you are going up at around 100 km from the surface of the earth we are going nearer to the sun and sun rays is coming full of energy what is the sun rays made up of now tell me in general does the sun rays consist of light yes din mein jab sun comes out then only you can see sun rays consist of light does it consist of ultraviolet rays radio waves microwaves infrared yes yes sara है सन की एनर्जी सो so, इसीलिए सन की एनर्जी को कहा जाता है स्पेक्ट्रम नाउ बिकॉज इट इज अ कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी रिसोर्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड सन इज अ कॉमन प्रॉपर्टी रिसोर्स एंड देयर फोर इट बिलोंग्स टू द सिटीजन्स ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एंड ईच एंड एवरी कंट्री आर अलोकेटेड एक्स वाइजेड अमाउंट ऑफ सन्स एनर्जी डिपेंडिंग अमाउंट हाउ मच ऑफ एनर्जी इज फॉलिंग इसमें से गवर्नमेंट में सेल सम ऑफ द सन्स एनर्जी and what you call as 4g spectrum 3g spectrum 2g spectrum jo spectrum hai radio waves are are traveling in that bandwidth and you know what i am talking spectrum ghotala ha huh? why because the spectrum was sold at a very very low price you can say it was freely given away to some of the companies and why aapka kya relation spectrum se it is 
because it is a sun's energy, it belongs to the world, it does not belong to the, only to the government. And government, you know, is elected by the people now. So that is what is the essence of spectrum. So you understand there are microwaves also, there are radio waves, wala band also in which the military communication uses some spectrum. Our normal telephone uses some spectrum. Then there are X-rays which are coming, which are used by the X-ray machines. There are UV rays, thankfully they do not reach the surface of the earth because of the ozone. This is how the spectrum comes and in that entire spectrum, we human beings can only understand visible light. We cannot communicate in ultrasonic. We cannot communicate it in supersonic. Sonic is the speed of light. So, Surprisingly, yes. Hmm? Satellite की बात ही की मैंने। नहीं, DTH direct to home। हाँ। Satellites आजकल आ गए, but even ionosphere, जो FM waves या radio waves जो आते हैं, हाँ, long wave और short wave, they will reflect the long wave and the short wave radiations. Now this is what is the ionosphere. इसका second importance is because it consists of the ions. It will react with the sun's का spectrum, and when they will react, earth does it have a magnetic field? Where is the magnetic field of a magnet greatest? On the poles of the magnet or yeah, in the entire magnet? Poles. poles. So because earth behaves like a magnet, we know that earth ka magnetic field is greatest at north pole and south pole. So when the earth ka magnetic field is greatest at north pole and south pole, sun rays will come and they will interact with the earth ka magnetic field at both north pole and south pole. And because the magnetic field of the earth will combine with the solar field of the sun, there will be lightning in the sky, which is known as aurora lights. Have you seen the photo of aurora borealis and aurora australis? What are this? The lights, natural lightning in the sky, just like firecrackers. Because of the interaction of the solar energy with the magnetosphere or the magnetic field of the earth, jo ionosphere mein ho hai. And this in the north pole is known as Borealis. And this at the south pole, kaun si badi country hai, southern hemisphere mein Australia. So it is known as an aurora australis. So these are the magnetic lights, aurora Borealis and aurora australis. So, Tell me now, will you find aurora lights in Norway? Yes, sir. If you want to see aurora lights, you will go to Norway? Yes. yes. Russia? Yes, sir. Sweden? Yes, sir. Denmark? Yes, sir. Greenland is a part of which country? So, applied socho thoda. Greenland is a part of which country? It is Denmark. USA? Alaska is a part of which country? USA. Canada? Yes. And Russia? Yes. This is how they will ask you. They will not ask ki ionosphere mein hai ya nahi. They will ask you if you want to see the aurora lights, you will visit which of the following countries. And hum yehi mistake. Denmark? Denmark to niche hai. But we forget that Greenland is a part of Denmark. It is a political part of Denmark. We forget that Alaska is a part of USA. And if I give you another option, Australia, to Australia is at poles? No. Australia has monsoon type of climate. So, Australia is in southern hemisphere where India is in the northern hemisphere. So, do we see the lights in the coming days? That will be firecrackers, not the <laughs> aurora lights. So, we will see that up to green crackers bhi aage hai. So, that will be firecrackers. That will not be aurora lights. Fine? So, Australia nahi. New Zealand? No. Southern hemisphere mein no country. <coughs> Why? Because no country is near the poles. Antarctica is not a country. Getting it? 
Antarctica is a ice cap, it is a continent, it does not have any people naturally staying there. Who stays naturally on Antarctica? Naturally. ये पेपर में आया था टेस्ट में टेस्ट में अच्छा न्यूज पेपर सो दिस हैज बीन अ पास्ट ईयर क्वेश्चन ऑफ यूपीएससी नॉट इन यूपी द आई हैव टोल्ड यू दिस क्वेश्चन सो यू नो दैट पोलर बेयर इज वन ऑफ द लार्जेस्ट प्रेडिएटर ऑन द लैंड इट इज इवन बिगर देन टाइगर and bears versus tigers if what who is more dangerous agar aapke samne bear hai ya aapke samne tiger hai which is more dangerous bear kills without reason tiger tabhi marta hai when it is hungry otherwise it will or when it is irritated agar if your tiger is near you and if it is not interested in you wo dekhega bhi nahi aapki taraf so we have seen that is why king type they roam in the jungle when you are as a tourist wo dekhte bhi nahi aapki taraf that is you try to scratch a photo etc unless they are hungry or irritated bear will kill without a reason so we have many such incidences in india especially in the amarkantak plateau region where the bears come in the night and because they are like human beings they can walk on the two they will knock the door and you will think that someone has a will open and they will kill you मतलब उनका एक्सीडेंटली दे नॉक द डोर एंड वी एक्सीडेंटली ओपन इट एंड दिस वाज द फेमस केस दिस मे व्हेन ऑन द इलेक्शन ड्यूटी टू ऑफ द ऑफिसर्स वेर किल्ड बिकॉज दे थॉट कि उनका थर्ड फ्रेंड हु हैज गॉन इन द विलेज हैज रिटर्न बैक होम सो दैट इज द बेयर एंड वी हैव अ केस इन द द सेम रीजन सम वीक्स बिफोर दैट केस व्हेन अ पर्सन पासिंग थ्रू ताडोबा नेशनल पार्क ऑन अ बाइक इज स्टॉप्ड बाय अ टाइगर Within some seconds, a tigress comes, but it is behind them, so their way is blocked. And you can see that video is also circulated. And they, after the some time, they, the only thing is because they lo they are locals, they know how to react. They sit very still. The tiger and tigress sniff them from the entire up to down, just like pet dogs sniffs us, and then not interested, they walk away. So, this is what is the difference between human animal conflict. Mein, Now the polar bear, which is the largest predator on the land, UPSC ne question pucha tha. Does not eat the penguin. Jinko answer pata hai, don't tell me. Does not eat the penguin because polar bear and penguin are in symbiotic association with each other. One option. Second option, the meat of penguin is not digestible by the polar bear. Third option, penguin has poisonous covering on its wings. Fourth option, none of the above. i am repeating the option pehla option symbiotic association with each other Th second because meat is not digestible third it has the poisonous covering on the wings and fourth none of the above answer is none of the above why because penguin stays in the south pole and polar bear stays in the north pole understanding this is what general knowledge based questions are one is in the north pole polar bear we do not find polar bears in the south pole a cds ka cpf ke exam ka question hai which is taken by the ups itself and the penguin stay in the south pole so therefore ek is area mein and ek is area mein remember this gk based questions which can come in the examination and then after the ionosphere that is after 400 kilometers we have exosphere it is famous for it is famous for international space station 
International Space Station, which is a man-made satellite, is located in the exosphere, one of the nearest low orbit ke, low orbit wala satellite. You can see International Space Station every day from India in India when it orbits the Earth, it comes over India at somewhere around 12 to 12:10 in the night. We will see a very bright lights shining in the sky moving with a great speed and that is International Space Station. So that if the lights are strong, you can see the power of your eyes, you can still look till exosphere. That is somewhere around 600 to 700 kilometers away from the earth. Fine with this? So you can take down the next part. disturbance zada hai. It is based on the modulation. Rat mein clean hota hai. Rat mein it is more clear. Unless if there is a rainfall or storm, aaj bhi nahi aayenge. If the weather is not clear, aaj bhi nahi aayenge radio signals. If the weather is clear, radio signals will come. पता है उसमें सच्ची में चिकन होता है कि नहीं? Twenty rupees में कहाँ चिकन मिलेगा तुम्हें? Artificially खा लेते हो, the same thing polar bear will artificially eat it. So it is only because polar bear cannot come from this pole to this pole. So that's why it is not. So you can take it down. Thermosphere. Thermosphere. It is the outermost layer. It is the outermost layer. And the temperature goes on increasing with the increasing height. Temperature goes on increasing with the increasing height. Hence the name thermosphere. Hence the name thermosphere. Hence the name thermosphere. It is further divided into. It is further divided into. Ionosphere, 100 to 400 kilometers. Ionosphere, or you can write 80 to 400 kilometers. You give very old time. 80 to 400 kilometers. 80 to 400 kilometers. In the ionosphere, this is a layer. This is a layer which has presence of which has presence of electrically charged particles. Electrically charged particles known as ions. Known as ions. They reflect the radio waves back to the earth. They reflect the radio waves back, back to the earth. Third, normal communication, satellite communication, nahin. obviously satellites to alagi hai. So, third, in this layer, in this layer, there is the presence of, there is a presence of northern and southern lights, northern and southern lights. known as Aurora Borealis. Boreal, have you heard the word Taiga? Where is Taiga? That is in the Taiga is in the Siberia, Alaska, Canada, Sif Northern Hemisphere. This is the name of Taiga, the other name is Boreal. Therefore, the name is Borealis. 
taiga boreal uh, that is aurora borealis in the northern hemisphere or at north pole and aurora australis aurora australis in the south pole aurora australis in the south pole this occurs due to this occurs due to interaction of earth's magnetic field interaction of earth's magnetic field with with the solar winds with the solar winds electromagnetic spectrum which reaches the earth it is also it comes with the greater intensity hum usko kehte hai solar winds you must have heard about sometimes ki solar wind is expected to come and it will disturb the signal uh, whatsapp pe bahut baar message aata hai ki aaj raat ko solar wind is being very strong so switch off your lights or phones etc so these are what are the solar winds exosphere exosphere this is the outermost layer of the atmosphere this is the outermost layer of the atmosphere here the temperature is here the temperature is very high temperature is very high but due to extremely due to extremely rare or you can use this word this also less denser atmosphere extremely rare, rare or the less denser atmosphere this temperature cannot be measured by normal thermometer less denser atmosphere this temperature cannot be measured by normal atmos normal thermometer how heat is transferred heat is transferred by conduction yes. convection and radiation so yahan pe conduction hi nahi hai radiations do not reach and conduction hota hi nahi hai so you cannot measure it normally jo hame jo heat feel hoti hai so because there is molecules in itself do not touch each other it will feel extremely cold there scientific thermometers are there there is a difference between temperature and heat there is a difference between insulation heat temperature so just remember this no need of going into that much details or if you want to know pay the fees and join geography optional <laughs> see this is what the structure of the atmosphere yahan pe our relationship above the troposphere ends ab jo bhi aage ke topics hai we are going to study it with the help of only in the troposphere and aage ke topics ka relation is very very simple if this is our earth the earth is more like a system what do you mean by system that is system is made up of different parts there is a processing that goes on inside the system there is a input in a system and you get some certain kind of an output in a system 
सो अर्थ इज अ सिस्टम जैसे कंप्यूटर सिस्टम यू से सो उसमें इनपुट क्या है माउस कीबोर्ड आउटपुट क्या है मॉनिटर एंड प्रोसेसिंग कहाँ हो रहा है इन द सी पी यू सो द सेम थिंग अर्थ बिहेव लाइक अ सिस्टम वेर द इनपुट इज इंसोलेशन एंड द आउटपुट वी गेट इज टेम्परेचर changes in the temperature where the input is and you can see they all are interrelated where the input is pressure and the output we get is winds what is the law of wind law of wind is which flows from high pressure to low pressure where the input is humidity that is the amount of moisture that is present in the air and the output is condensation initially cooling and then we get precipitation so condensation what are formed due to cooling in the coming days we'll see fogs so fogs are formed due to cooling after fogs clouds clouds are also formed due to cooling of an air then after that we find dew we find frost we find mist this all is a, are the forms of the condensation i guess you had one question like this in the test today what are the different forms of condensation so these are the different forms of the condensation condensation means anything that can stay on its own in the atmosphere but they require aerosols what require aerosols clouds require aerosols dew does not require frost does not require but fog and clouds require aerosols and precipitation that is after condensation something which falls down so if it is falling down in the liquid form it is rain if it is falling down in the liquid form but the diameter is very less it is known as drizzle hindi mein barish hindi mein bunda bandi that is that is the basic difference between drizzle and rain then after that snow frost sorry not frost hail what is the difference between snow and hail hail is in the ice form and snow is snow <laughs> what is the difference between snow and ice आपके फ्रीजर में स्नो ट्रे है या आइस ट्रे है सो इज इट हार्ड सो हार्ड ग्रैनुलर सब्सटेंस इज आइस विच इज कॉज ड्यू टू फ्रीजिंग एंड मेल्टिंग अल्टरनेट फ्रीजिंग एंड मेल्टिंग एंड स्नो इज सॉफ्ट ऑलवेज सॉफ्ट सब्सटेंस सो वेन एवर देर इज अ स्नोफॉल इन कश्मीर वैली और इन एनी ऑफ द हायर लैटीट्यूड्स तो इट इज नॉट डेंजरस बट हेल जो हमारे यहाँ होता है इट कैन किल द पीपल बिकॉज दैट इज आइस very hard which will come with the speed so hail is what is known as ole in hindi and sleet now all this three will interact 
and they will result into formation of cyclones, anticyclones, slit is frozen raindrop, uh, sorry melted raindrop, extremely cold rain is known as sleet. It starts as snow, niche aate aate, it will melt and then it is known as sleet, not found in India. It is found only in USA and in the higher parts of Europe, India mein nahi. It will start at as a snow and niche aate aate because it was temperature will increase due to friction, it will melt. So the raindrop will be very, very cold. That is what is known as sleet. So this is our climate. Understand here, not at all important, very rarely asked. Agar puchhenge to only in, P means pre. Pressure, yes, they frequently ask the pressure belts, generally in pre. Unless they ask one of the favorite question, why the deserts are always located on the western side of the continents. That you will understand while doing the pressure beds. Humidity may, it is not important except if it is the concept of relative humidity. And this is only important for pre, preliminary examination. Temperature, yes, they ask the factors affecting temperature. frequently in the preliminary examination. Kabhi kabhi questions are applied that we do not realize that it has come from the facts, parts of temperature. Or they can ask you an applied question why hill stations are cooler than the surrounding regions or why the highest mountains in the world are having glaciers. It all has to do with the temperature. But winds, pre plus means very important topic. You go and look at the past year questions and see how many times in both prelims and mains they have asked you about the winds, local winds, seasonal winds, trade winds, westerlies, easterlies, chinook, fawn, dust storms. Is all Ayatha dust storm pe question? So all these are done in the winds. And favorite climate of India that is monsoon is nothing but a seasonal wind. So winds mein hi monsoon aata hai. And monsoon is affected by El Nino, La Nina, Indian Ocean Dipole. So all this will come in the winds. And then when we come here, this is another very technical topic and very important topic, what is known as an jet streams, both for prelims and mains. Generally, here is a question nahi aega, unless they ask you difference between fogs and clouds. But question from here will be related to the current affairs. And what are the two topics related to the current affairs? One is the pollution in India. And the other is artificial rainfall. And the third is rainwater harvesting. Rainwater harvesting came this year itself. Pollution, so what are the steps to fight the pollution? So we will deal with the pollution ka concept in fogs and we will do the steps to fight the pollution in environment. You had an essay itself regarding the steps to fight the pollution. I had discussed the steps one day before in the other batch and they came 
what are known as alternative technologies to fight the pollution and climate change. There are numerous new technologies which are coming up. One of the, one or two technologies you also know if you have gone to any of the bigger temples of India, just mein bahut zyada line hoti hai. And in spite of summer, when you are standing there without footwear on a white strip, pair mein kuch hota nahi hai. But us white strip ke baad, the ground is very hot. That is what is known as an high albedo paint which has come to India. That is one of the alternative technologies to fight the climate change and pollution. Dew frost mist, you should know just the definitions from the prelims point of view. Types of rain and its applied part. Do it from prelims plus mains point of view. Drizzle, snow, hail, slit, nahi. Usme se hail, the formation of hail, why hail, you just have to remember it from prelims point of view. And then, these are the topics which are applied topics where they are very important from both prelims and mains point of view. Numerous questions can come from here. So cyclones, do type ke hai, tropical cyclones, temperate cyclones. And when we do that cyclones, iske saath we will do like we have done in the landslides. <coughs> Disaster management. Some recent news regarding the cyclone disaster management. Titli se kuch new thing which Orissa had done, is less number of people died as compared to Andhra Pradesh. Mangroves. So that is a, not a new thing, that is an old thing. I will discuss one new technology that has come to fight the cyclones. So India may not, but USA does it. USA creates mini cyclones, so that larger cyclone does not destroy the entire region. Still, we are nothing in front of nature, because you have seen cyclone Matthew or cyclone Florence destroyed major parts of USA. So these are the cyclones which are known by different names in different parts of the world. India may hum kahenge cyclones, USA may they will call this hurricanes, they will, somewhere they will be called as willy willies, somewhere they will call, be called as the typhoons. Air masses generally is a very, very technical topic, but UPSC does not distinguish. Last year itself you had a question on air masses in the mains exam. So, these are the topics which should be done very, very properly. And remember, each and every topic after insulation, insulation is very simple, each and every topic after insulation is highly linked. If you miss the pressure belts, maybe you will not understand jet streams. If you don't understand jet streams, you will not understand Indian monsoon in India. If you don't understand Indian monsoon, you will not understand the types of forest in India. Once you do not understand the types of forest, you will not understand the soils of India. Once you do not understand the soils, you will not understand agriculture of India. And ultimately, you may not be able to remember the animal vegetation of India. It is so linked, climate. So climate is demanding in the terms of your attention. And climate is also the most important topic after Indian geography in the examination. Because paper 3, is the rainwater harvesting ka question kis mein tha? Paper 3 mein. Understanding? GS1 mm -hmm. Floods, droughts, urban floods, all these are an example of an excess rainfall or no rainfall. So can I rub this part? Yes, yes, UPSC is doing that and be prepared for such questions.
So, what is the in insulation? Insulation is nothing but the short form for incoming solar radiation. The amount of solar radiation that reaches the earth is what is known as an insulation. So, we have in so insulation. This is what is insulation. In Hindi, insulation matlab dhoop and temperature matlab garmi. That is the basic difference between insulation and temperature. So, the amount of temperature, sun's energy that reaches the surface of the earth is what is known as insulation. And this insulation comes in the form of electromagnetic spectrum. Generally, this is low wavelength, lowest wavelength. And these are the bandwidth which is having the highest wavelength. Can I say in simple words, wavelength means distance traveled. How much distance a wave can travel? So, this is the wavelength. This wavelength is greater. That is from here till here is the wavelength. And opposite to the wavelength is frequency. This frequency is greater. So, wavelength is lesser. The distance traveled by the wave is lesser. But uska up down it is greater. So, lowest frequency. So, this is how the insulation comes. It is divided into what is anyone knows this? Sabse pehle gamma rays. After that this is in your science 8 and CRT. After that X rays. After that UV rays. Wavelength, they have to travel maximum distance from the sun. So, inka wavelength is so less that is gamma rays and x rays rarely reach the surface of the earth or do not <coughs> even reach the surface of the earth. After that, we have visible light. Can anyone give me the range of visible light? And this is further divided into That is violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. This is how the lights come to us. Red light can travel the maximum distance out of the all the visible lights. Violet and indigo have the shortest wavelength. This way they we cannot even spot them properly. How many of you get confused between blue, violet and indigo? Ajbi. Even if the color is shown to you. Can you distinguish? Especially if it is shown in the sari, ladko ke dress mein toh kya, ek do shirts, fir bhi, fir bhi if it is shown in sari, it is very difficult. Try, boys you can try it after the marriage. So, so whip gear here, this is how the visible light comes and then we have infrared, we have micro or radio. microwaves and then we have radio waves. Remember this for prelims. This is the order. 
of the electromagnetic spectrum. Only this is visible to the human eyes. Out of all this, it is generally the infrared waves which are trapped by the greenhouse gases. So, we have the solar radiation comes in the form of short waves and the terrestrial radiation comes goes in the form of long waves. So, earth generally gives out terrestrial radiation and the sun will heat up the earth, earth will heat up the atmosphere. And some of very simple questions, obviously this is used in synthesis, used in the photosynthesis. Now remember some of the applied questions here. This I will not make you right, I am just telling you this. when we come. Remember one basic rule, the shorter the wavelength, more is the scattering. Longer the wavelength, your eyes can spot it from a longer distance, fine. So why does oceans have blue color? Because sky is blue. So why does sky have blue color? Because all these lights are scattered. Usme se blue light is scattered the most and therefore the sky looks blue. Then we have the reflection of the sky on the water and therefore the oceans look blue or greenish in color. Greenish because they have phytoplankton also. Why anywhere in the world there are only three traffic light signals? Red can be seen from a longer distance. So signal of danger anywhere in the world. Orange, yellow confused ho jaoge, so it is the same thing. So, signal of slowdown, what does orange light means in reality, not in Delhi or not in India, slowdown. So, it means slowdown because there will be red after that. So, orange means slowdowns and green, even if you do not spot it from a longer distance, it does not matter because this is safe, go. So, you have to know the applications. Third thing is which is having the longest wavelength of the visible light, orange and red. So, when we see, if the, this is how the sun will come and set. So, when the sun is on the top of us, it is the blue light which is scattered the most, sky looks blue in color. When the sun is farthest away from us in the morning dawn or when the sun is farthest away from us during the evening dusk, sky will always look orange red. Why? Because your eyes can spot only red and orange color as they can travel that maximum distance. Baki ka light cannot reach you and therefore the sky does not look blue in color. Understanding this why the sky looks orange and red in color? Because except for reddish orange other lights cannot reach you. So color question aata hai, why during the dawn and dusk the sky looks or reddish orange? Answer is because reddish and orange color has the maximum wavelength and therefore our eyes can spot it from a longer distance. Getting it? Everyone? So these are some of the applied questions which come from this topic. Why it does not look? Violet you cannot, violet itna zada scatter ho jayega ki your eyes cannot even see it. So we therefore we say blue light is scattered the most. The degree of scattering depends upon the radius of the particles. So even it will scatter but which is the most dominant color, primary color is me. It is blue. So 
it is overshadowed by the other colors. What was the other doubt? Space does not have any color. Color hi nahi hai. Hawa ko kya color hoga? So, space hai kahan pe? Matlab kya hai space? Wahan tak jaoge to aur utna dur jana padega. No. Din mein bhi sky looks black. What is black color? When everything is absorbed, it is black color. What is red color? When everything is absorbed except red, it is red color. So black to kisi ka bhi color ho sakta hai. Just black hole ka bhi color black hi hoga. So because it is absorbing everything. factors affecting insulation do it only for pre so what is the one factor affecting insulation if this is our earth some part has dark some part has day so why is that rotation of the earth so can i say one of the factor affecting insulation is rotation the so earth complete rotation in 24 hours. So, because earth is a sphere, half part of it has a daytime which is not facing the sun, the half part of it is having the night time which is facing the sun. Now the question is, do each and every part of the world have equal length of day and night? No. Why so? Because this is not how the earth is earth is tilted at an axis at an angle of 23 and a half or 66 and a half. Agar yaan se measure karo ge, earth ka tilt is 66 and a half. Yaan se measure karo ge, earth ka tilt is 23 and a half. Now, the, so take down first factor. Hmm? Matlab? What is top rotates or top revolves? Kya hai? Rotation or revolution may kya difference hai? Kya hai? Khud ke gulna rotation ya khud ke kira gumna revolution? Haan. Revolution is when it goes in an optical plane. We are talking only about rotation. Even if earth is not revolving. Understanding? Revolution will cause difference between the day and night, rotation day and night. So take down the first factor is rotation of the earth, rotation of the earth. Due to the rotation, due to the rotation, due to the rotation, Some parts of the earth experiences day, some parts of the earth experiences day, while some part of it experiences the night time. Ideally, each and every place on the earth, ideally, each and every place on the earth. should have equal length of day and night. Each and every place on the earth should have equal length of day and night. But as the earth 
rotates on an in an inclined axis earth rotates in an inclined axis on an inclined axis which is inclined at 23 and a half Twenty three and a half to its kya plane or axis to its axis or sixty six and a half to its orbital plane orbital plane orbital axis axis is vertical plane is horizontal and also revolves around the sun. and also revolves around the sun there is variation in the length of day and night there is variation in the length of day and night as well as din aur raat mein variation to kya hoga temperature difference if the days are longer than the night more heating of the earth more heating of the atmosphere if the nights are longer than the day what happens during the night time earth will lose the heat so if the nights are longer more cooling right so jab din are longer summers jab nights are longer winters so it also causes variation in the duration of day and night and seasons and seasons So, कल अगर क्वेश्चन आता है एग्जाम में व्हाट कॉजेस डे एंड नाइट रोटेशन और रिवोल्यूशन रोटेशन व्हाट कॉजेस सीजंस रिवोल्यूशन एंड व्हाट कॉजेस वेरिएशन इन द लेंथ ऑफ डे एंड नाइट रोटेशन ऑन एन इंक्लाइंड एक्सिस एज वेल एज रिवोल्यूशन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस सीजंस और वेरिएशन इन द डे ऑफ नाइट अगर कल क्वेश्चन आता है वेरिएशन इन डे एंड नाइट इज कॉज ड्यू टू सीजंस, सो कल अगर क्वेश्चन आता है व्हाट कॉजेस रोटेशन ऑफ द डे एंड नाइट उन्होंने ये नहीं पूछा कि कितना लंबा सिर्फ डे एंड नाइट सो व्हाट इज द डे एंड नाइट द साइड विच फेसेस द सन विल एक्सपीरियंस डे टाइम द साइड विच डज नॉट फेस द सन विल एक्सपीरियंस नाइट टाइम बट द डे एंड नाइट आर नॉट सेम नाउ हैड द अर्थ बीन स्ट्रेट ये होता नॉर्थ पोल ये होता साउथ पोल this would have been the center of the earth that is the equator this would have been the tropic of cancer we'll do the latitudes and longitudes as soon as we finish this topic this would have been 66 and a half degree north 66 and a half degree south and then 90 degree north and 90 degree south but this is not how we are we are somewhat if this is our earth we are tilted at an axis of 23 and a half and this is where the equator is this is where the tropic of cancer is this is where the tropic of capricorn is and why it is just understand abhi filhal ye samajh mein aaya so this is how and this is where the north pole is this is where the south pole is so we are inclined at an axis agar hum seedha hote to no seasons india would have experienced the same climate throughout the year which we experience in the month of late march and april when jab 21 march se 10 april tak jo climate hai that would have been climate entirely throughout the year that means india would have been deserts rainfall nahi hota india mein rainfall is created due to pressure belts pressure belts are created due to variation in the heating of the earth so ye sara linked hai ab have to be you have if you have any doubts you ask me here because everything will be linked now till we do the winds so have you understood this concept now earth 
which is tilted at an axis, it also revolves around the sun. So understand this is our sun. And this is the earth here. It is revolving as well as it is rotating, rotating around itself and revolving around the sun. I say in the elliptical manner, but I am showing in the circular manner itself. Earth. But how it is the earth? It is inclined. That means this is the equator. This is the north pole and south pole. This is the tropic of Cancer. This is the tropic of Capricorn. Can you tell me why it is known as tropic of Cancer and tropic of Capricorn? Obviously, astronomy say related over. <laughs> because on when we say sun is in the tropic of Cancer or tropic of Cans Capricorn, sun is exactly opposite to Cancer zodiac sign. That is what is the tropic of Cancer, the line, the imaginary line in the sky. And when we say Mac Capricorn, sun is exactly opposite to the Makar. That is Capricorn when it is in the southern hemisphere. So this is how the earth is revolving around the sun as well as it is rotating around itself. So this is the reason for the seasons. Now why the seasons because this is where the earth is in this position. After that earth will come here, it, two dimensional hai, three dimensional. Hai. So niche nahi, it will come here, after that it will come in this position. You can see the axis, this is how the earth is, even if I keep straight, aisa nahi hai. it is this way and then earth will go behind. So, so this is how the rotation and revolution will be. Now let us take any starting point. So when the average tropic of cancer pe winters bhi hai hum tropic of cancer pe hai ki nahi abhi nahi hum nahi hai madhya pradesh wale if you are staying in the capital of madhya pradesh are you on the tropic of cancer yes if you are staying in the southern rajasthan are you in the tropic of cancer yes mizoram tripura yes so 
Tropic of Cancer is passing through some states of India. Does it pass through Gujarat? Does it pass through Rajasthan? MP? Chhattisgarh? Jharkhand? Yes. West Bengal? Then Tripura? Nagaland? Mizoram? Yes. So you should know this line through which the Tropic of Cancer is cutting. So Tropic of Cancer divides India into two parts. Tropic of Cancer ke upar ka part is temperate. We are actually now in the temperate region. But kya hamar India ka climate is same as Europe ka climate which is in the temperate region? Is it same? What is the difference? Europe is also near the sea, Greece, etc. Tropic of Cancer, bhul jau. Delhi. Delhi ke is side jau ke to, you are in, or if you go on the western side of Delhi, you are, are you eastern side of Delhi? Will you land up in China? Look in the atlas. Open the atlas. First page of India. India political. And see the difference in the climate between Delhi and some of the regions of the world. Delhi, can I say summers are very, very hot? Yes, sir. More than 45, 50 degrees ke yes. But if you go to the east, you will land up near Mount Everest. Eki latitudes ke aspas. And this is one surprising thing. And if you go further to the east, you will land up in Sikkim. Sikkim ka climate and Delhi ka climate. North and South Pole jaisa hai. You will go in Arunachal Pradesh. So remember, Delhi is in the same latitudes as Sikkim and Arunachal Pradesh. Still, there is a greater difference in the climatic conditions. Uska reason is later on, but you can see this is why in spite of winters being there in Delhi, during the daytime, the temperatures of North India, not the Himalayan states, of North India as are as high as the temperatures of any regions which is between equator to Tropic of Cancer. That is as high as Chennai, as high as Mumbai. And therefore we say, though half of India lies in temperate and half of India lies in tropics, we say India is a tropical nation. Technically India is both tropical and temperate nation. Technically the, the area of India is greater above, two times greater above the Tropic of Cancer as compared to the trop, as the area below the Tropic of can, Cancer. But still, we say that India is a tropical nation. Uska reasons, I will tell in detail in Indian geography, but one of the reasons is because of daytime temperature and unity. Unity will say in the terms of agriculture. India is not famous for apples, except for Jammu Kashmir, Himachal. India is famous for rice. India is famous for sugarcane. India is famous for tea, which are tropical crops. One of the unifying factor why we say India is a tropical nation, Delhi may be dengue milega and Chennai may be dengue milega. And dengue is a tropical disease. You will not find dengue, malaria, chikungunya in the temperate regions because they thrive on heat. These are points in exam. Ke. Yaad rakhna. Question will be why India is considered as a tropical nation. There are numerous points. So these are just two points which I have said. And uska reason, one of the reason is here. So this is the position where the sun is, where the earth is. So in this position where the earth is right now, the sun rays are falling directly on the tropic of <coughs> cancer. The sun rays are falling directly on the tropic of cancer. And therefore, because it is falling directly on the tropic of cancer, have you understood why? They are falling kaha pe? Because the earth is tilted. Agar earth straight hota hai, it would have been falling on the equator. But because the earth is tilted, it is falling on the tropic of cancer. And this occurs every year on 21st of June. And we will call this as 
summer solstice. Or technically, because we are in the northern hemisphere, I not technically nahi padte, this is north summer solstice. Because during this time, the northern hemisphere has maximum sun rays, but there is no sun rays falling in the southern hemisphere. So it is northern summers. Northern hemisphere has summer season, but the southern hemisphere has winter season. And therefore, it is the longest day and shortest night in the southern hemi northern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere. Why? Because Earth is a sphere. And kisi bhi sphere ke agar sunlight ho raha hai, a half part will be illuminated, the half part will not be illuminated. So I am dividing it into the half. We will say ki yaha pe night hai and the other part has day. Which area is more brighter, equator ki upar ka ya equator ki niche wala? You can see longest day, pe shorter days and the longer nights. And earth is rotating. No matter how the earth is rotating, south pole pe kabhi sun rays padi nahi rahe. So south pole has what? With south pole has night. In fact, south pole has six months of night and six months of day. Is samay north pole has six months of day. Yahan se yahan tak. And North Pole abhi, six months of night time. Understanding this? Everyone? After that, Earth will continue its journey and it will come to this position. Now, it is, when it is coming to this position, the sun rays are falling directly on the equator. So, the sun rays fall directly on the equator. And the sun rays are falling directly on the equator, you will call this as equinox. But which is this, spring or autumn for us, northern hemisphere? So it is known as autumnal equinox. When does it occur? It will occur on the 23rd September. Why the word equinox? Fifty-fifty insulation, but jayega. Equal day and equal night. Again, equal day and equal night at all the places between Tropic of Cancer to Tropic of Capricorn, one option. Equal days and equal nights at all the places between 66 and a half to 66 and a half south. Third, equal days and equal nights at all the places in the world except poles. Fourth option, equal day and equal nights at each and every place on the earth including the poles. Kya hai? What do you mean by equinox means equal day and equal nights? So I am giving you option. Why it is known as equinox? You tell me the right. Each and every place between tropics, that is between the tropic of cancer Each and every place between 66 and a half degree north to 66 and a half degree south, 
see each and every place. except poles 90 degree and D each and every place so to thoda including poles what what do you mean by equinox answer is it is known as equinox because each and every day including the poles has equal day and equal night diffuse sunlight pahunch jata hai pole mein north pole and south pole mein ek hi din aisa hota hai jahan 12 ghante ka din and 12 ghante ki raat hoti hai from the next day it is 6 months of day or either 6 months of night that is if you go to norway now it is already night ab to hamare yahan pe it is a day time night hai. So, but Norway may it is like this. It will be pitch darkness in Norway. In the polar regions, because our sun is where? In the southern hemisphere. Sun is no longer, sun, the earth, sun rays are falling no longer in the northern hemisphere. Hame lagta hai, sun is rising and setting, but actually it is we who are rotating and revolving and the sun is stationary. Understanding? So, what is the meaning of equinox? Each and every place on the earth including the poles will have equal day and equal night. So, we have 12 hours of day and 12 hours of night. Now the earth rotates in such a way that we feel that sun is going in the southern hemisphere. Actually we are moving away from the sun and because the earth is inclined at an axis, a maximum sun rays are falling on the, this is the tropic of Capricorn. We are here. Where is India? India is here. But the sun rays are now falling on the tropic of Capricorn. And therefore for the northern hemisphere, because the sun rays, that is the heating is less, we will call this season as winter. And exactly when the day on which the sun reaches this position, when the earth reaches this position, when the sun rays fall exactly on the tropic of Capricorn, we will call this as winter solstice. But actually what it is, it is the summer season in the southern hemisphere. It is winter season only for us in the northern hemisphere. So, in the northern hemisphere, ye kab hota hai? generally on 22nd of December. So, it is the shortest day and longest night but in the northern hemisphere. But in the southern hemisphere, the conditions are exactly vice versa. So, Al Nino or heating of the Pacific Ocean occurs during southern summers. So, kya Al Nino May me aayega ya December me aayega? Al Nino always occurs in December. Why? Because it is associated with the summer season of the southern hemisphere. Understanding this? One day. Yeah. One day, 24 hours ka day. Out of that 24 hours, 12 hours day, 12 hours night. After that entire 24 hours day in the northern north pole. Entire 24 hours night time in the North Pole. South Pole, night and day. That is except for these two days, 23rd September. And when the sun, earth continues its journey to such an extent 
that again the sun rays are falling exactly on the equator, we call this as spring or vernal equinox. Can someone tell me when it occurs? 21st of March, again equal day and equal nights. So, except for 21st March and 23rd September, South Pole and North Pole will be either having daytime or night time. Six months, मतलब इक्कीस मार्च से तेईस सितंबर तक इक्कीस मार्च के बाद से तेईस सितंबर से पहले तक इट इज डे टाइम एट नॉर्थ पोल उसके बाद ओनली ऑन दिस डे और ऑन दिस डे इधर देर इज सनसराइज एंड सनसेट एंड आफ्टर दैट अगेन इट इज अ नाइट टाइम सब जगह नॉर्थ पोल में नॉर्थ पोल एंटायर नॉर्थ पोल और एंटायर साउथ पोल इक्विनॉक्स बिकॉज दैट इज द स्प्रिंग सीजन एंड दिस इज एन ऑटम सीजन व्हाट इज स्प्रिंग सीजन अ मॉडरेटिंग सीजन बिटवीन विंटर्स एंड समर्स during the winters because winter is a dry climate therefore the plants will shed the leaves you will see in delhi the plants are already shedding the leaves and when the because plants require heat and humidity both heat is not there in the in the winter season so to conserve the loss of water through moisture through evapotranspiration how do the plants lose the water through leaves so they will shed their leaves you can see in the surroundings the trees are already shedding the leaves and let march come as the heat will come why the heat will come because now the sun ka journey imagine you are stagnant and sun is going around you so aapko kya lagega sun 21 march ko is exactly on the equator and after that it will come into the northern hemisphere it will stay in the northern hemisphere exactly on 21st of june the sun rays will be falling on the tropic of cancer then it will continue its journey and on 23rd of september sun will be back on the equator and after it is back on the equator the sun will again go back to the southern hemisphere actually it is not the sun who is setting rising sun who is moving the only thing is we feel that sun is moving but actually who are moving we are moving we are moving and sun is stationary we do not feel we are moving with because we are moving with a great speed you have seen this in the train if you are moving with a great speed aapko lagta hai you are stationary and baju ki train or the other part is moving so that happens that is what is the relativity so on this days on the 21st of june or on the 22nd of december the sun rays are such that they will fall only on the tropic of cancer or they are formed only at this line tropic of capricorn so we call this as tropics so when they fall on the tropic of cancer this is the maximum sun rays are falling in the northern hemisphere so the northern hemisphere has summer season and the southern hemisphere has winter season now vertical sun rays are falling here in the southern hemisphere we do not get vertical sun rays right now why there is less heating in the sun because the sun rays are coming in inclined manner why it is coming in inclined manner because we are somewhere here between september to december the sun rays are not vertically falling on us they are falling in the inclined manner and remember when anything falls in an inclined manner uska heating power is less when anything falls in a vertical manner uska heating power is more why laser is so dangerous because it is vertically falling all that part is concentrated you must have done in your school days a magnifying glass what does that magnifying glass does it takes the sun rays and concentrates so you can burn the paper with the magnifying glass or what is solar cooker concave glass sun rays fall and then they fall on the 
food. So it's all about the vertical versus the inclined manner. You will understand this concept in the third factor. We are doing just the first factor. Understanding this? Let me complete. So when this entire rotation and revolution occurs in such a way, ki hame lagta hai, this is summers, then the heat starts decreasing and ekdam cold nahi aata, but there is a high temperature during the daytime, but the cold temperature during the night time and right now this season we are experiencing is autumn. Understanding? But as soon as the sun will go near, the earth will go away from, the, the earth will go in such a manner that the sun rays will be falling directly on the tropic of Capricorn. December Ate we will say or November Ate we will say the winter has arrived. What is that winter and summer? Nothing but maximum amount of sun rays if it is in the southern hemisphere, we northern hemisphere wala people feel cool. Why cool? Because only half of this is illuminated. So north hemisphere has more of a darkness and the southern hemisphere has more of a light. So rotation day and night. And then after this, the earth starts its journey that we feel the sun is now coming back to the equator. Sun will come exactly over the equator again on spring equinox and then June, May, peak summer season. Have you understood this? I cannot draw the axis here, but you can understand with this. The sun rays are falling exactly on the equator. This is where the earth is. Here the sun rays are falling exactly on the tropic of Cancer. Here exactly on the equator. Here it is falling exactly on the tropic of Capricorn. Sir, my question is the entire north or south, how could it be one half day or night or something? Means? You ask me after the class then. I got your doubt. He is asking why equinox may entire northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere is exactly half day and half night. Can you someone tell me why? Because the sun rays are falling exactly on the center of the earth that is equator. And because it is falling on the center of the earth, half part is illuminated. The other half part is dark. Earth is also rotating. So half part will be illuminated, half part will be dark. But during the equinoxes, whether it is spring or autumn, I'll take now the, sorry, during the solstice, I'll take now the winter solstice. Aisa hai. Understanding? So now the sun rays are falling only on the tropic of cancer. So it is dividing the half here. So because it is dividing the half, you can see due to the inclination of the axis, sun rays are not directly falling on the polar regions. Sun rays are falling on the tr tropic of Capricorn. This is how the earth is. Only half part of the earth will be illuminated. You can understand this better with the diagram. If you have not understood, ask me after the class. Any other doubts? Sir, uh, what is the concept of October heat then? That is different. That is associated with monsoon. Exactly. But wo bola jayega. Six months of day. Diffused evening time ko bhi wo log night kahenge. Exactly to aise nahi ho. Have you understood these things? What is winter solstice? What is winter solstice? Anyone tell me what is winter solstice? Itna asan concept hai. What is the problem here? Winter solstice is earth is inclined in such a way that the sun rays are falling on the tropic of Capricorn. Capricorn. Tropic of Capricorn, northern hemisphere mein hai ya southern hemisphere mein? In the southern hemisphere, 23 and a half degrees south. Therefore, because the sun rays are falling on the tropic of Capricorn, north hemisphere, pura north hemisphere is receiving less sunlight or it is receiving inclined sun rays. 
Now I am understood the confusion. वो इसलिए confusion है आप सब में, because instead of taking this as a second factor and explaining you the first factor inclination of the sun rays, I took this as a first factor and I will be teaching you inclination of the sun rays as a second factor. So, जितना inclined sun rays, उतना you understand is the heating power. So, during this time, the, there is a peak winter season and therefore, we will call this as winter solstice. But, kiske liye winters? Only for us. But, for the people in Australia, this is summer. This is summers for us, but for the people in Australia, this is winters. Yes, what was the doubt? Yes. Because you can see, even if the earth is rotating, ये हमेशा एल्यूमिनेटेड रहेगा दिस हाफ विल बी डार्क हाफ विल बी एल्यूमिनेट नो शिफ्ट नहीं हुआ है अंडरस्टैंडिंग दिस वॉट इज सॉल्टाइस एंड इक्विनॉक्सिस नाउ यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द नेसेसरी कंडीशन कि सन एग्जैक्टली इंग्लिश कॉलेंडर फॉलो करेगा जरूरी नहीं है राइट बिकॉज सन will complete its rotation in 30, 360, revolution in 365 and one-fourth days. So, her one-fourth day, her saal mein, there is an one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth day. So, one day is added in the English calendar and it becomes a leap year. So, zaruri nahi ki English calendar ki isaab se sun is moving. Now, do we require a sunlight in a tropical country like India? Is sunlight a life for us? Why? Because we are agriculture-based economy. Agriculture ke liye we require kharif crops ke liye we require sunlight. High heat and high humidity is good for any crops. Understanding this? So, when, understand here, when the sun is in the southern hemisphere, uske baad, there comes a position that we feel that sun has started moving to the equator. Now imagine that sun is moving. Or earth moves in a such a way that we start feeling that now the sun rays will start falling in the northern hemisphere. We start celebrating this as Makar Sankrant. Somewhere around 14th of Jan. When the sun starts coming back to its the northern hemisphere. Or Pongal. Or by different names. Why? Because we celebrate sunlight. We, Baisakhi, we celebrate sunlight because we, ours is an agricultural country. Then when it comes exactly on the equator, equinox, 21st of March, is what is known as the Indian New Year or Hindu New Year. It is known again by different names, Ugadi, Kudi Padwa, or in North India it is Navratra. Understanding this? So it is Navratra in North India. Or it is Ugadi, it is Gudi Padwa. Why? Because after that, earth will continue its journey in such a way that now the sun rays will start falling in the northern hemisphere or our cropping season shuru hota hai and this is what is our Zayed cropping pattern. Dry summers wala cropping pattern, Zayed. Watermelon, etc. All the melon varieties. Then on 21st of June, Zaruri nahi hamesha 21st of June, Zaruri nahi that Gudi Padwa will occur on 21st of, of March. It sometimes occurs in April, sometimes occurs in early, late March. Why? Because sun does not follow. So when 21st of June is what, actually if it is occur, we call this as a Brug Nakshatra. Aaj even Indian farmers will wait for this day and they will start sowing the season and this is our kharif cropping season. Now what is this kharif? What are the important kharif crops in India? Rice, groundnut, wheat, no. Cotton, sugarcane, maize, or take important crops, tea, coffee, tobacco, 
X, Y, Z. So, this is when the farmers after the rainfall, because humidity will come during the monsoon, the, they will start sowing the crops. And in the month of September, char mahine baad, the crops will come out and they will harvest the crops. Once they harvest the crops, so starting May, when the sun starts moving down somewhere, you again ya hamari navratra shuru ho jati jo abhi shuru hui hai understanding this it is all based on the pattern of the sun the only thing is the dates will keep on changing koi bhi oriental calendar not just indian calendar koi bhi eastern calendar whether it is buddhism whether it is islam whether it is hinduism they will not follow the english calendar because sun does not follow the english calendar and then after the selling of the crops when the money used to come so somewhere here Diwali was there. <laughs> Understanding this? What was the earlier this thing Diwali? Lakshmi aati hai ghar mein. They used to say. And what is this Lakshmi? Lakshmi means crops. India is an agriculture based economy. So the crops and the money used to come. So tab khana properly banta tha. Because the crops used to come. And after selling. So pehle ke logo ko poocho. You ask even your parents. They used to buy only twice in a year. Dasera and Diwali, kapde ho, anything. Because money used to come only during that time. So, and uske ghar mein bahut saari cheeze banti thi, whether it's chakli, whether it is everything. Aaj kal sab ready made hai. So, that does not matter. But this is what is the Diwali. And after that, we have Rabi cropping season. Jaha pe only one important crop is wheat. Why say? In the international market and even in the Indian market, rice is fetching more. So, kal agar question aata hai prelims mein, hum Indian agriculture mein karenge, rice versus wheat, which is most important crop? It is rice. Because rice ka utility is more greater than the utility of wheat. And aaj kal ye problem ho raha hai. So, so rice traditionally a crop of peninsular India. A region where rainfall is very, very high. But after green revolution and irrigation, North West India, Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, where rainfall is very less, they have started growing rice. Why? Because irrigation is there. Why irrigation is there? Remember geomorphology, perennial rivers. Fine? Canal irrigation. So, this region which is traditionally a weed growing region now is taking a variety of rice known as basmati rice, which has very high demand in the international market. Earlier they did not used to take rice. Now they take rice and as soon as the rice ka cropping season goes, ends, there is a wheat ka sowing season. Wheat ka crop will come out somewhere here, sowing season. But because this is a semi-arid region which is not naturally meant for rice, paddy crop yaha pe develops thick stubble. And therefore, in the recent years, instead of removing the stubble, they are doing stubble burning. Understanding this? So this is why the stubble burning is done and why stubble burning is becoming the problem only in the northwest India. Fir, there is a wind which is known as jet streams. Jet streams always move from west to east. So jo Punjab ka, what is the agricultural climate? The same agricultural climate is of Pakistan. So Pakistan also does stubble burning. And because Pakistan does stubble burning, Pakistan is west to us. So when the jet streams come during the winter season, they take all the pollution from Pakistan, Punjab, Haryana and it comes and settles over Delhi and the Great Plains of India during the winters. So you see stubble burning. And we blame Diwali ka crackers. <laughs> but the major cause is stubble burning. Therefore, you see how much government is focusing on stubble burning. Why only in the recent years? Why not during the ancient times? Because this is not a rice growing region. It has started taking rice only in the recent years. Then why rice that they are taking from 67? Why from 2010 pollution, 2005 pollution? Pollution has increased from 2005 onwards. What was the biggest legislation during 2005? Mandrega. Mahatma Gandhi. National Rural Employment Program. So after Mandrega, agriculture labor has become very costly. There has been reverse migration of agriculture laborers from Punjab back to their home states. Why? Because there is a job job. Understanding this? 
and therefore finding an agriculture laborer is very costly. So the farmers ke liye the cheapest way is to burn the crop. Understanding this? Otherwise higher, how much? 180 rupees anyways they are getting. So vidha mehnat kiye zada. Usme se 80 rupees even if the corruption mein that thikedar is taking 100 rupees to they are getting. Sirf angutha marne ke. Right? Mandrega is one of, kisi kisi statement is one of the most corruption. Corruption ka jad hai Mandrega. Right? It is a good thing also. It is a bad thing also. It is a good thing because it has given employment. It is a bad thing because it has increased the price of agricultural inputs. Aaj kal agriculture workers, laborers nahi milte. Ask your parents if they are doing agriculture and they will say, aaj kal labor nahi milti. And that has happened after Mandrega. And as a result of this, the pollution has increased. So, you have to understand it conceptually. The problem can be solved only if we hit the root cause. Not just asking farmers not to do it. You have to give them solution. Laborers nahi you have to give them equipments. Just telling them ki aapko jail ho jayegi, they are not going to listen. You have to give them equipments. Equipments and uske baad jo entire jo ye hai stubble usko store karne ke liye usko fekne ke liye bhi you have to give them some place and wahan pe comes third generation second generation biofuels because that stubble is important it is can be used for making ethanol that is a biofuel but for that there should be compulsory blending of petrol and diesel so policy to hai 2005 se we should be or 2010, 2018 may be the blending is not being done. Why? Because nothing has happened on the ground. Everything has happened only on paper. Understanding this? So you cannot just blame the farmers because this is the, even they know it is harmful. If you live, read the interviews of the farmers, they know even their far children are suffering. But to employ the laborer, feel to employ the tractors or trucks and dump them somewhere else, then pay the fine of the government because you have dumped in green zone, non-green zone. So it's such a best hai, jalalo. Understanding this? So this is the entire issue and this is what you have to relate to the solstice and the equinoxes. Fine with this? One more thing, you remember, I am just drawing in this. This is a dry summer season, March, April, May, which is famous for hot winds known as Lu in North India. The ground becomes so hot that air from the ground starts rising upwards. March, April, May are the three months when the ground becomes very hot and therefore the air rises up. As the air rises up from India, the surrounding winds from the Indian Ocean comes towards India and therefore this is monsoon. Does water takes time to get heated as compared to the land? Water will take time to get heated and therefore at the end of monsoon, September, October is the season of tropical cyclones in India. On the sea. Tropical cyclones abhi aap pad rahe titli etc. Why? Because simple reason hai, the water takes time to get heated. Land gets heated at a very faster rate as compared to water. Fir the sun is in the southern hemisphere here. So northern hemisphere ki air will become colder. Does, is the colder air denser? Yes. So will it sink down? Yes, so nowadays this is the season of pollution in India. Pollution, jitna bhi saal bhar ka pollution hai, it is up. Diwali aate hi or winter saate it starts coming down. Aisa nahi ki we are polluting more. We are polluting entire year. But jab pollution aata hai then we realize odd even scheme. 
So, four days of odd even scheme, how it can remove the pollution that is caused entire year. The only thing we do not realize because the warm air rises up. So, it takes away all the pollutants and the cold air is. So, pure sal ka pollution it is bringing down. This is what is you will understand this in the coming lectures by northeast monsoons. Precision, हाँ, precision तो उसी से आपसे आएगा। Mathematical calculations थे इंडिया में तब So fine with this? This is what is the northeast monsoon. Now, this is somewhere the October is here. Understand the sun, the sky is now after the monsoon season, clouds nickel jayenge because they are dry. But during, so clouds if they are gone, are the sun rays directly coming and hitting us? Yes. yes. Right? Even if the sun rays are not directly falling vertically, but they are coming and hitting us. When there was a cloud cover, the sun rays used to be stopped by the clouds. The sun rays are coming and directly hitting us, but in the last three to four months, there has been heavy rainfall. Is water vapor a greenhouse gas? Yes. So, during the daytime, they will trap the heat, but night time may the heat will be lost because sun is not there. So, during the daytime, the temperatures are very, very hot. Night is cold and this is what is October heat. If they, why October heat? Because of the previous moisture the water vapor is going to trap the heat. So, this is what you should know the relationship between Indian cropping pattern, Indian climate and what is known as an They will not ask you this all things, but it will indirectly help you in solving many of the questions. How that is because of global warming, up is season make naya problem hai. That is dust storms. Is season may thunderstorms. Is season may dry winters. There are no western disturbances. And all this double burning etc. is contributing to Asian brown cloud. Asian brown cloud, the high amount of pollution over Asia. Fine with this? So, you can take down now. Cropping can Because sowing kiya jata hai, either harvesting hoga, March tak. March ke baad zahed aja hai. Kya? Koon sa? October may because winter start night start becoming cooler in the October. So, cold air, cold air is always denser, it has the tendency to sink and jitna bhi sal bar ka pollution hai wo niche le aayega. So, therefore, you will be more clear about this rotation and revolution after watching animation tomorrow. I will show you the animation of how the earth goes. So, you can take down now.
factors affecting rotation of the earth. What is the first factor? Factors affecting insulation, rotation and revolution of the earth. So, you take down here. Due to the rotation and the revolution of the earth, due to the rotation and the revolution of the earth, there is a formation of solstice and equinoxes. There is a formation of solstice and equinoxes. Solstice and equinoxes. 21st of June, northern summer solstice. 21st of June, northern summer solstice. Because the sun rays are vertically falling over. Because the sun rays are vertically falling over the tropic of Konsa, Cancer. Sun rays are vertically falling over the tropic of Cancer. Next point, due to the apparent movement of the sun, which movement? Apparent movement. Apparent movement means, hame lagta hai sun is moving due to the apparent movement of the sun. The sun rays vertically fall over the equator. Sun rays vertically fall over the equator. Vertically fall over the equator. On 23rd of September. On 23rd of September. And therefore, as the light is equally distributed from the center of a sphere, equator kya hai? Center of a sphere. As the light is equally distributed from the center of a sphere, each and every place on the surface of the earth, each and every place on the surface of the earth, experiences equal day and equal night experiences equal day and equal night experiences equal day and equal night causing equinox causing equinox causing equinox Next point, as the earth continues its journey, as the earth continues its journey, on 22nd of December, on 22nd of December, on 22nd of December, the sun rays fall directly over the tropic of Capricorn. The sun rays fall directly over the tropic of Capricorn. Therefore, it is winters in the northern hemisphere winters in the northern hemisphere winters in the northern hemisphere and summers in the southern hemisphere summers in the southern hemisphere barish hamare yahan pe monsoon mein which season june july august september monsoon type of climate is present in two parts of the world india and australia so australia ka monsoon will start now why? Because Australia is tropic of Capricorn and India is the tropic of Cancer. 
So right now in Australia, the climates are same as we have in April and May. But April and May, May in Australia, the climate is as we are having now. Remember, if it is in uh, summers in northern hemisphere, it is winters in southern hemisphere. Why? Because the earth is inclined at an axis. And then the sun again comes and then on 21st of March, on 21st of March, on 21st of March, the sun rays are again falling on the equator, sun rays are again falling on the equator, <coughs> causing spring equinox, causing spring equinox. causing spring equinox. See two main seasons, summers, winters. Summers and winters ke beech mein it is autumn and winters and summers ke beech it is spring. Spring in India, Basant Rutu, right? Spring is known for heat and therefore Pani itna nahi hai. So, ped itne, because what rainfall does not start, so trees cannot grow, but shrubs, flowering plants will start growing. And anywhere in the spring, it is totally colorful. In spring, we play with colors, Holi. Holi comes in spring. Everything is associated with the movement of the sun. Understanding this? Ab natural holy, jo pehle kheli jati thi, not today's holy. So, 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 but this is because colors. And autumn is always associated with dry conditions because the trees will start shedding the leaves. next factor affecting the insulation. Based on this, there has been one question. This is our new year. Government ka new year is when? When is our financial year starting? When is our official year starting? And when is our cultural year starting? India is a country of diversity. 21st March can also be a new year, Vikram Samavat. India yearbook, first chapter. Understanding? Official year, 1st Jan. Financial year, 1st April. Nabad ka financial year? RBI ka financial year? One or two questions like this are asked in the examination every year. So the second factor is, now you'll understand why solstice and equinox is angle of the sun's rays. Now on any day, again it is a general knowledge based, on any day, which is the hottest part of the day, morning, afternoon or evening? Why? Because if you are standing here in the afternoon, sun is vertically overhead, it's the afternoon, and the sun rays are directly falling on the surface of the earth. When they are directly falling on the surface of the earth, they are covering lesser surface area. And because lesser surface area is covered, what is more is the heating power, concentration of the same intensity, sun rays, it is falling on the lesser surface area and therefore it gets heated up. On other hand, when the sun is far away from us, it can be evening morning or it can be from 23rd of September to 21st of March. 
the sun rays are falling in an inclined manner and see again I am drawing the straight lines. They fall over the much larger surface area, right? And therefore, heating power, jo heat it is equally distributed and therefore, heating power is less. Plus, when sun is in the inclined, it has to pass through maximum layers of the atmosphere because earth is not flat. It has to pass through maximum layers of the atmosphere and the simple law of energy. The longer this distance, there is more greater loss, transmission and distribution loss. You have seen this also. If you are, especially if you are engineering background, you know that transmission and distribution losses. There cannot be large number of grids at a very, very far away places because if you transfer electricity, it will be lost. Energy is lost if it is transferred for longer. So the sun rays because they are covering larger distance, longer distance, there is losses plus atmospheric dust aerosols, they will reflect some part of sun rays. Clouds, they will absorb some part of the sun rays. There will be more of a scattering and therefore the heating power is reduced. Isiliye even today, din mein dhoop to hai in the coming winters, there will be sunshine, but the sunshine because it is inclined, it is somewhere in the southern hemisphere, you will like that sunshine. You will sit in the sun in the morning or afternoon time. But yehi me me karo, when the sun is exactly on the top of us, 40 degrees, 45 degrees, our skin will get burned. Understanding this? So now because the, you have to understand everything here, you have to understand this logically, with the winters, the sun is now in the southern hemisphere, the sun rays are less, are more inclined, it does not have heating power and therefore evaporation is less, evaporation is less, so most of you will start using cold cream in the coming days, moisturizer, why? Because there is no humidity in the atmosphere and humidity is responsible, he is touching the face abhi se, so, so the, there is no much humidity, no humidity in the atmosphere and therefore you require more much and much of an cold cream. Understanding this, it is, remember the cold cream ka idea because it is directly associated with the topic after this what is known as temperature inversion. Temperature inversion is associated with fogs. So remember angle of the sun rays, vertical sun rays. fall over lesser surface area and therefore cause more heating plus they travel what shorter distances. Why India is a founder of Indian International Solar Mission or International Solar Alliance? Why? Because we are a tropical country. We know at least two times in a year sun will be vertically overhead us. One when it is going from tropic equator to the tropic of camp cancer and first say when it is going from tropic of cancer to the equator. So initially International Solar Alliance had only those countries which are located in tropics as its members. Has it changed now? So what is the change now? So do you do as a assignment what is International Solar Alliance and uska members? Do cheeze yaad rakhna, koon si do country founding member hai? Which year was there any major summit this time or many conference and today who are the members? That is just remember geographical location, which countries are allowed to become members. Jaha jaha we are in the tropics where the sun rays are vertical, we have a high amount of solar power output. So our project is renewable energy ka, making solar how much energy? 
हंड्रेड गीगा वॉट बाय टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू वाई ट्रम्प इज एंग्री ओवर बिकॉज उसका सिर्फ लोअर पार्ट इज इन द ट्रॉपिक्स बाकी का पार्ट इज इन द टेम्परेट एंड प्लस ही डज नॉट हैव हिमालयाज टू प्रोटेक्ट हिमसेल्फ फ्रॉम द कोल्ड विंड्स विच विल कम फ्रॉम द पोलर रीजन विल अंडरस्टैंड दैट इन सम लेक्चर्स सो ट्रम्प कहता है कि ग्लोबल वार्मिंग नहीं है and after that he now says that there is a global warming but he is not sure about the source whether it is human beings or it is natural have less heating power why because first they fall on larger surface area and second they cover or they pass through more atmospheric layers it is longer distance and therefore there is scattering absorption reflection etc fine with this so we'll continue tomorrow any doubts ab tak if you can understand ye basic concepts you can write an essay on the emerging technologies to find a fight a climate change कैसे कुछ टेक्नोलॉजीज जो आपको पता है कुछ टेक्नोलॉजीज जो आप एग्जाम में इन्वेंट करोगे ओके यू हैव टू बी दैट मच क्रिएटिव